Okay, so uh, thanks for the introduction. Again, my name is uh, Tian Hao Wan, and uh, uh, today I would like to uh, present our work uh, that is using, uh, solve the frequent item set mining problem with a uh, formal uh, privacy definition called the local differential privacy. And this is a joint work with my advisor, uh, Professor Ning Kui Li from Purdue and uh, Professor Meshka from Wisconsin Medicine. So uh, in recent years, we, uh, we have a lot of cell phones, we have wearable uh, devices and uh, lots of other devices. Uh, in many cases, the companies would like to collect data from all the users either for uh, making recommendations or predictions or even for um, preventing uh, malicious phone calls. Uh, but sometimes users are not willing to to give, the, give their private information to those companies. Uh, this is even the case with the new regulation come into enforcement. Um, but uh, we, we, we kind of now have a, a, a technique that can, can be used to persuade the users to, to give their information to the companies. And that is called the randomized response. Uh, intuitively, this is a technique uh, like uh, systematically lying to the companies. Um, with that, every user is kind of uh, not always telling the truth, but sometimes lying, so they feel they are, uh, they are good, they are not uh, uh, sacrificing their privacy. And on the other hand, because this is uh, lying in a systematic way, uh, the companies can still get some utility. And this is a survey technique uh, proposed in the 60s, and uh, now we, 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 we will go through uh, an example. So for example, the survey people ask every user, do you have a certain disease? And uh, each user will, in this setting, will flip a secret coin, and uh, we assume it's an unbiased coin, and uh, if it comes up head, we will answer the truth with, uh, with, with uh, like 50, uh, percent probability, and if it comes up head, it will answer randomly. So the good thing about this, tech, uh, this protocol is that it provides what we call the deniability. So informally, uh, this means seeing the answer, no one is uh, able to tell the, uh, the truth. And also this can be easily extended to handle more general setting where uh, for example, you choose, uh, there, there are more uh, possible answers, and uh, we formally call it uh, the setting of local differential privacy. So specifically in this uh, LDP setting, there are many users and a centralized server or aggregator. Each user has private value and uh, wants to uh, send some information or what we call noisy data to the server. So in this setting, because the, the data is first uh, perturbed and then sent to the server, therefore the trust boundary for each user is uh, very limited. Specifically, there is a perturbed function P that takes value V from, uh, from a specific domain, and it will output the uh, value Y, which we call the report to the server. And we see that the function p is uh, epsilon LDP if and only for, for any two values v and v prime from the domain. The ratio of the probabilities those two values are perturbing to the same output is, is bounded by epsilon. And the uh, smaller epsilon means the, uh, st stronger privacy. On the server side, there is a, a estimation function that takes all the user's reports and uh, output the uh, estimated distribution of any value in the domain D. And uh, this, uh, we call this protocol uh, a frequency oracle, and there are many uh, uh, other frequency oracles proposed in the past, and uh, uh, we refer to the, uh, uh, our paper in using 17 for, for, for systematic survey and uh, other uh, frequency oracles. And also in the industry, we have seen many uh, uh, deployment. For example, Google's deployment with the Chrome browser and uh, Apple is using it 
to collect information from iPhone and uh, Mac OS. And, uh, and I think uh, Microsoft is also deploying it uh, from last December or sometime. So in, in this paper specifically, we want to solve the problem of uh, frequent item side mining. And uh, yeah, so this problem can be used for association rule mining or prediction uh, and other things. So specifically in this setting, each user will have a set of values and the each user will uh, also report to, uh, with uh, uh, LDP to the server. And the goal is to find the, frequent, uh, the most frequent uh, singletons and uh, the most frequent item sets. So for example, in this setting, there are five users and each user have uh, some set of values and the top three uh, most frequent items are uh, E, A, B and uh, the top three most frequent item sets are uh, E, A and uh, A, E because A uh, appears in four of them simultaneously. So uh, to solve this problem, a strawman method would be to uh, encode each possible item set into a, into a value in a very big domain. So here, uh, the domain is pretty big. So the problem, uh, this solution cannot scale with the larger D and uh, also if one item is uh, uh, frequent in many uh, infrequent item sets because each user report the item set only, this item cannot be captured. Yeah, so with that, we have the challenge. Uh, the first one is that each user now has multiple items and another is each user's item set is different. So to, to solve this problem, one technique we can use is what we call pad and sample based frequency oracle. So in this frequency oracle, each user's item set is different and uh, each user will first pad it into the same size with the dummy items. Now each user has L items and uh, will uh, sample at random one, one item from this item set. Then the user will do the, uh, what a randomized response or frequency oracle will do the user will report with, to the uh, server and the server will aggregate and uh, find the estimated distribution and will multiply the results with L because each user sample with L. Yeah, so, uh, so the idea of this uh, uh, function or this uh, technique is that when many users have the same item, it will sample very frequently so that the aggregator can can capture this signal and uh, have that as a result. So one existing solution to this problem is called LDP miner in uh, CCS16. There are two phases in this problem, uh, uh, in this uh, solution. In the first phase, the, the goal is to find the um, candidates of the most frequent singletons. So specifically, uh, each user will first pad its site into size L where where L is the 90th percentile of the size distribution, then each user will uh, randomly sample one and then report. At the end of the first phase, uh, the potential 2K frequent, most frequent items are returned. And in the second phase where the goal is to estimate the frequencies, each user can uh, intersect its private value with the 2K uh, items and then pad to 2K because because the intersection is at most size 2K, there is no uh, missed items here. And then each user can randomly select one and then report. Uh, however, uh, this, uh, this solution could not uh, handle the frequent item sets mining problem, and it, it can only handle the uh, item mining. And because it does not, uh, um, well, or choose the optimal uh, well uh, uh, parameter, uh, and we have uh, the two observations here. We will uh, increase the utility of this solution. Yeah. So uh, the first uh, observation is that there are two uh, sources of errors. The first one is the variance of the uh, pr uh, frequency oracle. That is because each user has to perturbate, this perturbation will introduce some noise. 
And also the noise will, um, the variance will increase quadratically with the size L. And another is, uh, as you may notice, there, there, there is an underestimation effect. So the, the last user has six values. Each of them will be sampled with the probability one six. But in the result, the result is multiplied by only five. So there is an underestimation. The intuition here is we want to trade off between the two sources of errors so that the overall uh, error will be uh, minimized. But that depends on the, uh, the goal. For example, if, uh, if the goal is to identify uh, the frequency oracle, uh, sorry, is if the goal is to identify the most frequent items, we have two kind of options. One is to use a fairly large L and another is to use uh, uh, the smallest L. So we noted that uh, the option to, to our left is, uh, um, is okay for frequency, uh, for frequency estimation, but for identification, some users may uh, report dummy because some users uh, will, will pad dummy items to his uh, private value. So this makes the signal very weak. And on the other hand, the, the option to our right is, um, is more stable because even if it has some underestimation effect, um, the relative ranking of the atoms are, are, are pretty stable so that the overall result is, uh, is better in this setting because uh, the, weak, uh, the signal is stronger and, uh, and the ranking is stable. We also have another observation uh, we call privacy amplification effect. So uh, in, this, in this observation, we, know, we already know that uh, LDP will bound the perturbation. For example, in the randomized response, we have this uh, uh, ratio. But with the sampling, things will be different because each uh, value will be sampled first and then, sorry, each value will be sampled first and then uh, and then perturbed. So we can see the, um, the equation to the bottom is, is different. So therefore, we can use larger epsilon uh, in, the, in the right of the screen. And uh, so, we, so as a result, we propose to adaptively choose the be better uh, performance of frequency oracle based on, uh, based on the overall variance and based on the uh, improved uh, privacy uh, epsilon prime here. So our protocol, we call it uh, SWIM for a uh, set value uh, item mining. So it's, it looks uh, somewhat similar to uh, LDP miner, but uh, has some K difference. One, one is that in the first phase, uh, each user will sample, uh, sample one uh, value without any padding. And in the second phase, we want to um, find the 90th percentile of the, of the new uh, intersections. And in the third phase, each user will pad to L, which is the 90th percentile, and then report with the, this adaptively, adaptively chosen uh, frequency oracle. And so, yeah, this is the diagram of our uh, protocol. And uh, notice that the, the two steps to the bottom are for item set mining, which uh, for the time constraint, I will not talk in this um, presentation, but uh, um, it will be in the paper. And as a highlight, it will perform uh, better than the uh, LDP minor. So yeah, finally, there are some experimental highlights. We, we use the post data set, which contains like uh, thousands of uh, different items, and we compare with the LDP minor, and also some uh, improved improved version of LDP minor in order to highlight what are the uh, key features that leads to the uh, improvement, uh, performance improvement. So this is one uh, result of uh, identifying things. We, we use the uh, F1 score and the X axis is the epsilon, which is smaller the better. Y axis is F1 score, the higher the better. And uh, there are two, can, uh, four kinds of, uh, six, sorry, six kinds of uh, um, 
competitors. The first one is LDP Miner, and we have uh, some uh, improvements over it. And finally, is our uh, Swim protocol. And we can read some uh, scores from it, and, uh, and also the, uh, we can see the interesting point that the big jump comes from if we use adaptive uh, instead of some uh, fixed uh, frequency oracle. And we can also uh, see this similar effect when uh, estimating uh, the frequency of the, those singletons. So finally, to, to conclude, uh, this paper uh, considered the problem of uh, finding frequent item, se item set and the frequent uh, singletons. The main takeaway uh, in this paper is that when we use some frequency oracle in some setting, we'd better uh, 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 examine it in, uh, carefully instead of using it as a black box. And uh, yeah, we also cover uh, item set mining in the paper and uh, uh, I look, look forward to see you in the post session tonight and uh, I will uh, take any questions if you have. Thank you. So we have time for some questions. Please come to the mics. Uh, so one question I have, uh, the fact that you are now mining also the frequent item sets, does that reveal more information about the frequency initially? Because you're kind of gathering more information about the system and then I wondered if there is no side channel that has these two quantities and reveals more information as if you were not actually mining those. I see. Uh, so, so first of all, we have the, uh, the, the LDP definition, which is a, a mathematical bound. And uh, another uh, key factor is that each user will report once to the system. So if we also uh, do frequent item set mining, we, we will ask another group of people. So we, we partition the users into many groups. Okay, okay, that makes sense. Uh, do we have more questions? So does that mean that if you were ask, actually asking the same users, you would be leaking because of correlations? Yes, like yes. If we ask the same user two questions, we need to uh, double the privacy budget, which is bad. Okay, so do you expect your system to be actually uh, used for by Google or uh, Apple or one of these? Uh, yeah, we hope so. Have, have you talked to them? No. <laughs> Probably Ulfar was around. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay, then let's thank our speaker.